Gentlemen, congratulations. Thank you so much for taking the time where well, you're contractually obligated to. So I, uh, <laughs> I appreciate you guys being here. And I want to be here. I just want you to know. Come on. I have watched you and uh, do your thing, man. Nothing but, uh, nothing but respect and praise for you. The shirt, the, the, where's the shirt? Though? Thank, yeah, well. Yeah. And, and the, and the guys knows. love you too, man. The, the, uh, the players love you. The kids love you. Come on. That makes me feel really good. I had a couple of booze cocktails last night. Was in here a little tired. You just made me feel mercy. Great. I don't want to hear about that. No, no, it was me. It was me, not uh, your boys or anything like that. But let's uh, talk about this. So I have a show every day. A lot of things are said on it. And I'll start with you, Coach. Adam Schefter joined us, Michigan man. And he talked about you and your trip back to Michigan. And he said that he thought one of your missions was to restore greatness at Michigan. Like, as a Michigan man, you almost felt obligated to your alma mater to come back and restore greatness. Now, I don't know if he was speaking for you or if he was just thinking that that was the case. Three straight college football playoffs, now a national championship appearance. Do you feel like you've done that for Michigan? And was that a mindset going back to coach there? Uh, yeah, I wanted, uh, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a Michigan man. Um, you know, I try to live up to that standard. It's how you describe that there's no real one definition, but um, if, if, you know, when they throw dirt over top of me, if uh, somebody could, would, you know, eulogize me and say he was a Michigan man, that would, and, and, and that would sum it up, I'd, be, I'd feel really good about that. Three straight and then now a national championship appearance. I think a lot of Michigan people in khakis are saying you definitely did that. And for you, Coach, I've got a chance to learn a lot about the history of Washington football this year because they've been taking a trip down memory lane with how great Washington football used to be. I think a lot of America is getting introduced to the great fan base that the Washington football Huskies have had. Was that something that you talked about whenever you took the job? Was that expected of you? Like, hey, we're trying to get back to a national prominence. And did you expect it to happen as quickly? Whenever yeah, I knew there was certainly a history of greatness that involved, that was uh, surrounding the program. And uh, that was very attractive to me. Um, I think there was these roots, this um, these bones about the program um, that, that had championship uh, kind of a feel to it um, knew it was possible because it's been done before and um, you know just coming in uh, I guess um, not in an arrogant way but just feeling like that's what we're going to do is compete for championships you know uh, and to do it here in year two is special um, it's a huge credit to our players uh, it's, it's a huge credit to the people that helped bring them in uh, even prior to our staff uh, you know, there's just a, a way that our guys have embraced our coaching staff coming in here in these two years. Um, it goes both ways, but uh, man, it's just uh, it's just awesome. You know, having these moments right now bring back a lot of the memories of those great teams in the past. You know, and hearing more and more stories, and me being it even more educated. Um, you know, only having been here two years, it's it's really fun time right now being a, a Washington Husky. Coach, we're out there for game day. 6 a.m. local out there in Washington, Seattle. Packed out. Rain, miserable, cold. Your fans show. I didn't know what to expect. I was a little bit of a hater going in. And then it was like the most active crowd I've ever seen. I'm like, I did not know West Coast football was like this. They're like, well, Washington, it's different. Speaking of different, your quarterback seems to be different. This dude's accuracy is phenomenal. His arm, a cannon. His leadership, great. But I think the story going into the year was he came back to do this. Right, isn't this kind of why he came back to Washington? And with everything he's been through, why is he the perfect leader for the team that you have? Yeah, well, first of all, it was great having you out there. And it was uh, awesome. we didn't have that sitting next to us, uh, but uh, you know, we had- They brought seat. this thing in first, the bottom part, mm -hmm. that was a little small, you know what I mean? And then they brought this top part on. I'm like, now we're talking. Sweet. You know, that's what we're playing for, coach. <laughs> Will you touch this? Hmm? Will you touch this? <laughs> Me too, man. <laughs> I'm not, I got no shot, but uh, Michael Penix, why do you yeah. think he's the perfect guy for your team? Yeah, he just, um, I mean, going back to when he came here, uh, it helped us kickstart things really quickly. He, 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 you know, he knew the offense. It was the same system we ran back in 2019, and so uh, we really got off and rolling quickly. But what I've really seen out of him this last year, uh, beyond the skill sets uh, and all the things that he can do, um, with his accuracy, his arm talent. Um, he's really led our team, you know, and uh, I have such an appreciation for the journey he's been on, how he's taken all those experiences and really poured them into making sure that uh, he can pass those moments that he's learned from. Um, no regrets, control what you control, all those things that he stands for. 
having faith and, and just confidence in who you are that things can, uh, the sun will come up the next day, you know, uh, when adversity does strike. He's taken all of that and just poured into our team. Our team, again, has embraced him in every way possible. And uh, it's just been an awesome, awesome piece to, to see from my vantage point as a head coach, uh, seeing this group of gentlemen come together, um, you know, and obviously led by Michael. Yeah, thanks for what you guys did for the state of Indiana there. Yeah, that was the most exciting college football we had in our state for a while there. You guys were dicing and slicing. Uh, coach Harbaugh, a wise man once said, I like my locker room to be like my mother's bathing suits in one piece. In one piece. And then I also heard a wise man say uh, <laughs> that chickens were a skittish bird. And then that same man said, I was completely wrong. Yeah. We're talking Takes low. a big man to admit they're wrong. Big man. Huge to do that. Low maintenance, high production. Correct. These chickens. So right. with both those things coming together. Do you think the reason why your locker room has been able to handle everything and has been able to stay in one piece like your mother's bathing suit is because there are a bunch of chickens, low maintenance, high production. Why do you think your group has been able to handle everything that's been thrown their way this year and not blinked? I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. I'm forced to pick games every week on game day. Don't love it. Mm -hmm. Not an easy way to be a hero in every town, especially in a very, mm -hmm. uh, we'll say aggressive college fan base in some places. Got some death threats in places, you know, for picking against their team. I assumed with the amount of distractions that your team had this year, 18 to 23 year olds, that's something we get in. It's hard to win a football game. Your team has stayed the course, stayed tight, remained that bathing suit. Why do you think that's the case? And well, who do you think is responsible for that outside yourself? Sure, um, a lot of factors go into it. Uh, you know, a lot of times it's a thousand little things that add up to make all the difference, but um, you know, different factors. Sometimes it, it's, it's as simple as, I don't care what the frick you say about us you know we know who we are and we're going to try to dominate this day go to sleep and then wake up and dominate the next day <clears throat> you know another part is yeah it's low maintenance equals uh, the lower the maintenance the higher your production i don't have any scientific evidence to support that it's just what i've noticed um and the big thing is is the players it's always it's always comes back to the players pat in my opinion and coach said it, you know he had a quarterback that came back he had members of his team that came back because they wanted to accomplish something you know we had the exact same thing um jj mccarthy when he walked off the podium last year after the tcu game said he will be back you know we'll be back and i had a reporter asked me yesterday um well jj mccarthy last year left the podium and he said that that he would be back whatever and i said not whatever not whatever yeah. you know that's huge he Michael Penix, you know, uh, it wasn't just a resolution uh, for Michael or JJ. I mean, that was repetition. That went in every single day. And had they not done that, you know, it would have been, that guy would have been the first guy to say, you know, what went wrong, knew it was going to go wrong, predicted it was going to go wrong, you know, not giving, a, not giving a frick and, you know, putting that repetition in every single day. You know, those players made that happen. You know, I take very little credit. For, uh, for what our players uh, and coaches were able to accomplish this year. But, uh, um, yeah. Well, I love it. I love your teams watching them. Last question for me for both of you, and I appreciate it. And I think you probably already had to address this a thousand times. And as we get closer to the game, I'm sure you're both excited to not have to do it anymore. But as you watch film of his team, what do you think his culture is? What do you think he's looking for whenever he's recruiting a guy? Can you tell that by watching film and watching what type of team he has on the field? Yeah, tough, physical connected, um, you know, really talented uh, players, uh, really well coached and, and connected. How about you, Coach? For Yeah, I think the thing that I've been impressed with because um, you always kind of identify it when it's something that you really feel is important. And um, you can see that, you know, Coach uses the word connected. I think that's a great one. Um, but you can see a team that's just fighting all together, all heading the same direction, want it for each other. Um, a lot of the things that I think we've utilized as far as having our having people maybe doubt us or challenge us um, in different ways. We've had each of those things happen uh, in our programs, you know, over the last couple of years. And, um, you know, it's just, man, you know, it's all about just you. And I think Coach has done an awesome job galvanizing his team and bringing them together and and uh, just you know being there for each other I think that's what our team has done you know we're there to to fight but uh, yeah coach 
Um, when you talk about toughness and physicality, uh, Coach Harbaugh and, and his team, um, you know, this would be the greatest challenge we've had uh, all year long by far, uh, both sides of the ball in all ways, all phases. Well, great work this year by both of you and your teams. Congratulations. You know, Coach already touched this. Maybe you'll get to do the same. Um, what did you say to Reese? Resilient is cool, but I want to be relentless. Bruce Willis, diehard, okay. I want to give me the Terminator. Yeah. You both proved that this year. Congratulations. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much for taking yeah. time.